Hey there, welcome back to the show. It's me, Colin Key, your host for episode number 14 of the I Hate Tipping Podcast. Today on the show, we're going to talk about a few things and then some other stuff, and then we're going to get into uh, this and that and all the rest of it. I appreciate you joining me for today. Uh, this should be having good time with uh, all of us and you. Let's get to it. Hey, welcome back. Episode number 14, late as usual. Big things going on in my life. Uh, stuff I'm not going to really get into right now because the energy is just weird. And I have a feeling that some of it's bullshit. I got this deal with me where I believe that, you know, certain things when they come at you in life, you should just ignore them and then they go away. <laughs> So I got a bunch of pile of shit in my lap right now, which is, it is, is, it could be heavy on my mind. I'm not going to let it be heavy on my mind. I'm like, fuck it. Who cares? Life goes on. I'm back with y'all for another episode of the show. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's fucking almost what? 80, it's 80 something degrees outside, which is crazy because like two nights ago was like 30 something, I believe. (laughs) Nobody's talking about the weather. The weather's weird as fuck. I'm going to get a little bit more into that with another thing that uh, that's on my mind about the state of events of the world right now, a little later in the show. But for right now, I just want to thank y'all once again for coming back and joining me again for another episode of the show. As always, you can get a hold of me at IHateTipping at AOL.com. That's the email. Shoot comments, questions, or suggestions. Tell me I'm a piece of shit. Tell me you love me. Tell me whatever you want to say. I love to hear from you, regardless of what it is. As always, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. It's not hard to find. Just uh, search Colin Key. I wrote a book. It's available for you to consume. It's uh, out there in the universe on the interwebs and and everywhere electronically and in paperback on uh, Amazon and Kindle form. Please enjoy today's obligatory book plug. And as always, thank you for your support. By the way, friends, I wrote a book. Get the book. It's called These Ones Are Mine. Buy the book. It's my first book. Pick up a copy of the book. It's my first one. Do it by the book. You should buy it. Buy it by the book. It's full of crazy stories. Cook it by the book. Cop stories, sex stories, fight stories, adventure stories. You can pick up a copy of the fucking book. Fart stories, stories about animals. <laughs> Military stories, childhood stories, drug and alcohol stories, tobacco stories, and a whole bunch more stories. And every story is absolutely true. The book is available on Amazon and Kindle, and 100% of the proceeds from the book goes to buying me a mansion and a Porsche. What kind of love? Get the book! Thank you for buying my book, and thank you for your support. I love you. Hopefully I'll be getting it out there on audiobook sometime in the near future because I'm super into that idea. Somebody just tell me what I got to do to do it. <laughs> I'm going to investigate actually and, and figure all that out. If I think it might just be a money thing. When it becomes an international bestseller, like it's destined to, I want it to be available on all platforms, including uh, audiobook because I love audiobooks myself. Let's get right into my own personal news. couple new things that I learned about my phone as I said I was going to do last episode. I said as I hadn't really dug into the phone yet to I was so excited about the phone. I didn't I just wanted to talk about it last time and I didn't really get into any of the cool shit about it and I'm learning as I go. The first thing I want to say is I found this fucking wallpaper. I don't, I don't even know why I'm talking about it because I don't I don't have any way to tell you how to get it. But the screen on this phone is so ridiculously fucking HD. I went and purposely looked up super HD fucking wallpapers. And I found this one of this plant that looks like it's like poison fucking sumac or something. It's like purple and green and it has water drops on it. And every time I go to unlock my phone, I just stare at this fucking picture. It is so fucking beautiful. I've never seen colors represented like this, like even in real life. Like it looks so beautiful on the screen. It's insane. Anyway, a couple other things that I figured out about this phone. Well, for one thing, when you turn on the edge lighting, if you're not familiar with uh, the Samsung Galaxy, they have a the, an edge. And the edge part means that the, the, the sides of the phone are beveled. And you can use those beveled edges of the phone as separate 
parts of the phone with their own menus and, and quick items you can pull up and like contacts and shit. You just, just swipe on the little corner. Anyway, this new phone automatically came with the edges, I guess, because it was so popular. And they have what they call edge lighting, which is self-explanatory. The edges of the phone light up like when uh, incoming calls and, and shit like that come in. Well, they went a little bit further with it this time. And now whenever the edge lighting lights up, that shit goes all the way around the phone. And it looks awesome <laughs> that whenever I get phone calls or text messages and shit or not phone calls, I think just text messages or like emails or whatever. It lights up like a fucking like a strobe light almost all the way. And it goes like in a circle around the phone. It, it's awesome. It looks fucking it, it, the main thing about this phone is the aesthetics of it is so beautiful. So anyway, so there's that. There's the the screen, which I'm just super in love with. There's uh, what else did I put here? Um uh, the phone is lightning fucking fast as fuck. When I hit a button, boom, shit's open. When I swipe, boom, shit's open. When I click on this fucking app, boom, that's open. When I click it close, boom, it's closed. I go through this shit fast as fuck, and the phone just has no lag time. Just boom, boom, boom. Whatever you touch, that shit is doing it as fast as you touch it. It is faster than my computer. It's the fastest thing I've ever fucking... It's the fastest piece of technology that I've ever interacted with awesome it opens and closes apps instantly just about i mean if it's a big big program or something you know it'll take a second to load the program up but that shit is up dude it's fast um the motherfucking phone is waterproof if you didn't know <laughs> i thought my last one was waterproof uh i dipped it in water and the water went in the earphone hole and the, the fucking head earphones didn't work for until I fucking like blew in there and got the water out. And then after that, it still acted kind of weird. Uh, yeah, so that was a mistake. I think that the S6 Edge Plus was like unintentionally water resistant, but I'm pretty sure this one is, is like guaranteed to a certain, but you might not be able to go swimming with it, but I'm, you know, I've seen all over, in, all over the internet that you can sp basically spray with a hose and it'll be fine. Awesome. That's all I got for the phone right now. More shit as I, as I come across it. But I just say that uh, every day I just fall more in love with this phone. It is just perfect. Okay. In other news. I went to the dentist yesterday and for the first time in my life, the dentist not only told me that I was a class one patient, which I oh, just learned what the fuck that was yesterday. I'll get into that in a second. But she also said, quote, your teeth are so clean. <laughs> this is not me bragging, people. I have had fucked up dental visits for my entire life. There have been very few times in my life when I went to the dentist and didn't have multiple cavities in my mouth. If you want the proof, I'll take a picture of the inside of my mouth and you can see the half a pound of fucking metal I have in my teeth. I have fucking fillings all over the place. My, I've had to have my teeth sealed. My mother has genetic tooth shit that I'm hoping I don't end up with. Like she lost all her teeth. I'm, I'm hanging in there. What flipped the script for me was I had a near um, an almost root canal incident like two or three or four dental visits ago where I almost had to have a root canal and I had like all these people around my mouth like yeah go for the root canal no you can save the tooth no do it and they were it was very tense and shit and crazy it scared the shit out of me I know a root canal ain't that big of a deal but I think they can go wrong and I really didn't want it shout out to uh <laughs> my dentist Matt Marshall he fucking he nailed it he put fucking out three ounces of amalgam or whatever the fuck they call it in my tooth that I took a picture of the hole that he dug out of my tooth to get that fucking huge cavity out of there. It was crazy. Like basically the whole inside of this one tooth is, was dug completely out and then filled in with the fake shit, the metal or whatever they use. But he saved it. He didn't have to kill the nerve or whatever they do for a um, for a root canal. So I'm thankful for that. And it scared the shit out of me. And I started brushing my teeth way better and flossing and doing and, and slowly but surely got into better routines with my teeth. Like I rinse after I eat everything. I take water and just swish it around in my mouth. Like if I'm at work driving a work truck, I floss. I chew a lot of like uh, sugarless gum just to keep the shit off my teeth. When you chew gum, it makes you have saliva in your mouth and the saliva helps to wash away the shit that you have in your teeth from what you ate. I do a lot of that. I pay attention to my teeth more. And it finally, for the first time in my life, showed. I was super happy about that. A class one patient, when I <laughs> my dentist said that 
uh, that's what I was. I said, what the fuck's a class one patient? And she said, basically a patient who doesn't have anything bad going on. And I was like, I'll take that. No cavities, no fucking bleeding gums, no horse shit like that. Awesome. Loved it. I mean, I, I eat and drink so much candy and, and coffee that my dentist visits never go like that. I'm used to needing fillings all the time. I'm used to having like fucking the drill and, <laughs> and, and the, the suction and the fucking water spray and the fucking in the grinding and the fucking chip all that. I'm used to that like it doesn't even bother me I kind of like the pain of it to be honest with you but it was nice to not have to get any more of that shit done damn uh, what else? I was happy about that. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, so I was happy about that. And I'm still happy about how smooth my teeth feel now from the polishing that that chick did on them. My smile still ain't shit <laughs> because I had braces when I was young and I never wore the retainer. And as soon as I, I mean, like a week after I fucking got the braces off, my teeth started moving. So I got like a little gap on the top and the front. And the ones on the bottom are all crowded together like a fucking prom. <laughs> I don't know. It's just crazy. I mean, it's, they're not horrible, but they look good. They're they're, they're polished and kind of shiny and they're, they're off white, but, you know, they ain't fucking brown <laughs> like some of y'all motherfuckers out there. I knew people with black teeth anyway. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. And um, that and my gums are all recessed unevenly from brushing too hard for years and from dipping snuff for fucking 20 years or whatever. I smile anyway, because uh, smiles are the best. <laughs> I did want to mention, though, the vibe in the dental school yesterday was fucking weird. It, it took long as fuck to get shit done. And even the student who was doing my teeth was complaining about it. Every step of the way, everything that the student does to my teeth, the instructor has to come and check it. And, and if the student has any questions, you know, they don't they can't do anything that they don't know how to do. They have to say, hey, am I, is this right way or whatever that it, it's all very safe so that they don't fuck your shit up being that they're students but the instructor was mia half the time and then when she did come around she was super asshole to the student chick and i didn't understand it i don't know if they have some kind of a history together or something but it was so fucked up and weird like for example this the student got done with something the instructor finally after a fucking hour shows up and comes over and looks at my mouth and the student says or, and then the instructor starts saying okay so when you did blah blah, blah and the student said i'm sorry sorry what was that and then the st- the instructor says, I was talking. I'm speaking now. Whenever you should. And I was like, whoa, that shit was unnecessary. And um, she asked the student a question about something. And the student answered her. And then she said, well, you did what? And she said, oh, I, I threw it away. And she said, why would you do that? And the student said, I, I don't know. And then the teacher just like stopped and looked at her and was like, that was completely illogical for you to do that. That makes no sense for you to do that, to do that. And I was like, holy shit. Like, that's not cool. If you're going to reprimand somebody, you don't do it in front of the fucking the clients like that shit was crazy and it it just seemed out of place and the student was almost crying whenever i left the student walked me out and her eyes were welled up with tears and she was looked me right in my face like what the fuck just happened and i just felt bad for her uh on another note the instructor lady had strong ass hands (laughs) when she first showed up before she started digging in my mouth i was looking at her hands like holy shit this broad must have been doing this shit forever her hands look fucking muscly and then it showed whenever she got in my mouth i mean you could just see it was just from 30 years of doing <laughs> grinding the same way and people's mouths with those little tools and shit her hands were strong she was very she was very thorough she made sure that anything that the student missed that she got i was a hundred little uh, talking about like digging out some tartar or whatever they call it calculus the hard shit that develops anyway she was thorough she made me bleed and hurt it was pain but it's the kind that i enjoy i enjoy the dentist pain a little bit so anyway in the end my teeth were great but the shit was just out of control uncomfortable in there and it took forever i was in there for three and a half hours i think last thing i want to say about that was uh that older woman she was an older jewish woman the instructor big beautiful dark brown eyes kind of gorgeous tight fucking body she had like the 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 fucking napkin that they wear the whole the, the paper gown thing on and it was like tied around her waist she had like a tight waist and just a tight body that was a good looking old bra she, uh, she was probably fucking 50 something but she looked good i'd hit it anyway so i had to go out of town for a work meeting uh the i don't know last weekend or something and afterward a few of us drivers went to a truck stop to eat because they didn't feed us at the meeting we all sat around talking shit talking about the meeting what was going to happen with our job and after the meal my buddy started we 
we're about to pay and the woman came and gave us our, our bills and shit. And my buddy starts telling me the easiest way that he figured out how to calculate the tip for a meal. And he started going on about how to do this math problem. He's like, if it's, if this is a six and you carry the five and the blah, 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 and the blah, blah. And I just was staring at him and I immediately just got fucking mad. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I wasn't mad at him. I was mad at the fact that it, that he was telling me how to do a math problem, how to figure out how much additional money I had to add to to the amount that was already printed on the bill for my food. I stopped. Like I said, I wasn't mad at him. It was just the situation. I was like, <sighs> I, I stopped him and I said, dude, have I ever told you how much I fucking hate tipping? And then he, it, it snapped in his head and he was like, he started laughing and he said, yeah, yeah, yeah your podcast. Ha, 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 ha. I was like, dude, tipping pisses me straight the fuck off. <laughs> if my... <laughs> If my meal needs to cost more because restaurants can't afford to pay servers a decent wage like any other job in the fucking country, then they need to raise the price of the meal and charge me that amount going in. Have that amount with the with the extra amount that I need to pay, the 15%, the 7%, whatever it is, put that into the price of the fucking meal in the fucking menu or on the bill and don't expect me to pull out a calculator and start figuring out how much bonus money that woman needs because her job sucks, okay? That's not my fucking job. I come to eat. Give me that. I'm going to pay whatever it costs for the food if I can afford it. If not, I'll go somewhere else or whatever. I, this, this tipping shit blows my mind and it pisses me off so bad. I hate it. I hate it. I hate that shit. If I have 10 bucks and I'm hungry and a pizza costs 10 bucks, then let me get my fucking pizza and eat it in peace without having to feel like a piece of shit or being labeled as an asshole for not paying more than the 10 bucks that the pizza costs. <laughs> Tipping fucking sucks. We need to stop that shit. This unspoken rule that you're supposed to just pay more than what they're charging is stupid. Fuck tipping. I got so much more to say about that. That's not even why I hate it. I'll get into that way more in depth one day soon. But I just wanted to say how I was fucking mad as hell. Like it, it, my meal was good and then it was ruined at the end. I was like, fuck this shit. Why isn't anybody talking about this shit? Next segment. <laughs> I'm not clear on what it is you expect me to say, or how you expect me to say it. You expect me to tell him about the next segment? Oh, I'll tell him about the next segment. If you'd be kind enough to pay me. Pay me. Pay me every bloody fucking cent I'm asking for. And then you'll have your message. Back when I lived in Germany, me and my buddy had got wind of uh, a place off base that you could buy a catfish. And uh, we were both, we both love catfish. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. He's like, yeah, I heard about this place. And I was like, let's go. No brainer. Let's go. So we go to Catfish. Or the, it was a fish place, a, a German owned fish place off base in some town in Kaiserslautern or wherever the fuck, somewhere around base. We go into the fish place. The The owner of the place is there. Super cool, uh, like older German dude, whatever. We ordered a catfish. We're standing around waiting for it to get done. There was this cart that the guy had sitting in the lobby with all these assorted hot sauces on it. Me, I've always been a hot sauce person. I love it. For whatever reason, I got it from my dad. My dad was always a hot sauce person. Whatever. I was looking at it. I was like, oh, shit. I definitely want some of this. Which one's the hottest one? And the dude's like, oh, you want some hot sauce? I was like, yeah, which one's the hottest one? He's like, oh, you want the hottest one? He's like, well, that's not the hottest one. I'll give you the hottest one. I was like, okay. Dude disappears in the back. He reappears with two little, or excuse me, with one little small, um, of those little plastic things that they'll put like sauces in and shit for to go things without the lid it just had a tiny little it had like one dab of some hot sauce in it and he gave me and my buddy both toothpicks and i was like what is this and he's like that's all you need i was like well i was like dude no i eat hot sauce this, this this is nothing i was like i eat hot 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 sauce he's like no you never had hot sauce like this and i said really uh, a toothpick <laughs> and he's like trust me he said one drop what just dab it in there one quick time put it to your tongue and get ready i said okay fine so now i'm getting i'm like what the f i've never heard of anything that crazy like i had some hot ass hot sauces in my life but at that point i was like okay I, this is new me and my buddy both grabbed our toothpicks dabbed them in my buddy swirls his around gets a whole bunch on her as much as he can and then puts it in his mouth and <laughs> he's like oh that ain't nothing well, okay and then i took mine i just did a normal little dab with mine Bleep, dabbed it on my tongue and then we said thanks to the guy and he gave us our fucking shit and as we're fucking walking out of the place uh, it was like a delayed reaction it was weird my buddy is just like uh, uh, hits the ground fetal position crying <laughs> he might as well have been screaming uh, 
I saw that happen to him and that's when mine kicked in and it was like it was like somebody took a soldering iron and was pushing it straight through that spot on my tongue where I had dabbed that little fucking shit. It was so weird. It was just a long delayed reaction, like almost, I'd say close to a minute. And then whammo, that shit hit like a fucking hot molten fucking piece of steel through our mouths. Killed me. Literally, <laughs> literally thought we were going to have to go to the hospital. The pain lasted for like phew, at least 10 minutes. I think the guy came out and gave us both milk. That shit didn't help. <laughs> Water didn't help. Eating food didn't help. The only thing that helped was time. It just took time for that shit to go away. And I've watched people eat like uh, Carolina Reapers and shit these days. And it was probably something like that 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 guy had. Crazy. Another quick true story. I came home to my mom's house years ago, like right when I first got out of the military. And this was back when the people still had like regular answering machines. And my mom had an answering machine and the light was blinking and I hit I hit the button to play the, the whatever message was there. There was a over 10 minute long answering machine message. It might have even been longer than that. I think it was like 14 minutes or something long fucking answering machine message of a woman screaming. screaming let me out <laughs> let me out fuck this i want out i want to go home ah and it i was like what the fuck is this uh i listened i sat there just paralyzed like what the it sounded like somebody was being accosted or what or murdered or raped or something or whatever i was like what the fuck and i hear like an engine and like tires peeling out and craziness and then when the woman finally almost calmed down towards the end of the the message I recognized the voice and it was my best friend's girlfriend. And then that message just cut off. And I was like, what the fuck? Did I just hear her getting murdered? <laughs> like, what the fuck was this? So I got a, I got a hold of my buddy. Well, I tried to get a hold of him. I couldn't get a hold of him for a while. Later on, I finally got a hold of him. And he told me the story. What had happened was him and his girl had gotten to the car with this crazy person that we all know. And that crazy person was driving and hit somebody else's car while he was driving that person started chasing him and they ended up on this long ass high speed chase and the crazy person who was driving the fucking car was like cutting through people's yards and jumping curbs and like riding on the sidewalk and almost hitting people and was like hitting corners at 100 miles an hour and it was like this crazy action scene out of a movie that I didn't see I just heard it all on my fucking answer machine and I swear I wish on everything I would have saved that it was real life fucking out of a <laughs> out of a car chase scene out of a movie with a woman screaming bloody murder the whole time it was crazy yeah so that's something that happened next segment next segment <laughs> time for movie talk i got lots of movie talk to do i'm gonna condense it down but i got what one i think i have four movies to talk about one two three four movies to talk about uh sp spoiler alert ahead of time on everything these are all either rentals from the red box that I was just catching up on or and one of them I just happened to hear about and watched on Netflix getting straight into it the first movie I'm going to talk about is the train to Busan because I watched this first on this list it's a Korean movie it has subtitles it's a zombie movie it's pretty awesome I've heard a lot of people talk about it on YouTube and shit on the review channels that I watch and that's how I heard about it otherwise I, I didn't know anything about it <clears throat> okay so Ugh. Train to Busan. It is a cool, fresh, new take on zombie movies. They did stuff that I hadn't seen before. Spoilers, like I said. The movie is about a little girl who kind of hates her dad. She loves her dad, but her dad is an absentee, kind of a dude who's just career focused. And the girl's like, will you please just take me to my mom? He, she's supposed to be with him that weekend or something. And he's just like, oh, honey, I'm so busy. She's like, just, just take me to my mom, please. Take me to my mom. And he, at first, he's like, no, you're going to spend time with me. She's like, I, I just want to go see my mom. Just Can you just take me to my mom? And her, and her mom lives in Busan, which is a city in Korea somewhere. The dude's like, okay, fine. So he takes her and they get on a fucking train and they're on their way to Busan. And this, <laughs> the world just gets ravaged by the fucking fastest zombie shit takeover that you've ever seen since like World War Z. World War Z was like they get bit, 10 seconds, boom, they turn, boom, they're on you. It was just like that, except maybe even faster. I don't know. It was cool as fuck. It was very fast paced as far as the, the zombie shit goes. So they're on this train, shit starts happening. People, different characters start appearing and, and going through the shit and there's, there's, you know, there's shit happening, there's strife and people are dying and being turned and, and everybody's trying to survive and figure out what's going on and and like i was saying some of the sh cool shit that starts to happen is like 
there's one scene when the train goes through a tunnel and one car that's full of zombies that's attacking some survivors still. When the lights go out, the zombies just stop because they're in the tunnel. They're like, what the fuck? And they just stop. And then there's lights on the walls in the tunnel that look like they're flashing as they're riding past them and it hypnotizes the zombies. They're like, oh, that was new and cool. And that gave the, the survivors a chance to get away. Pretty awesome. Um, so what I'm saying is just shit like that. Like they did different stuff there was this one scene where there was a million zombies chase running after a train after a different train they had hopped a couple different trains and they caught up to it and one jumped and grabbed and another one jumped and grabbed that one and was hanging by his legs and another one jumped and grabbed that one and before you know it there's this fucking 300 zombie body being a pile being drugged behind his train and other zombies are like running up on top of it the pile to get to the train it was pretty crazy there was some pretty awesome action sequences there was a lot of surprises and holy shit moments um a lot of the characters were pretty cool and the relationships like the one between the girl and her dad that was pretty complicated and the 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 route that they went with that was pretty awesome like i said though this isn't subtitles so you got to be prepared for that It, it doesn't bother me um there was a big dude and his pregnant girlfriend and the relationship between that guy and the dude with his daughter was pretty interesting and where they went with that, there was this super scumbaggy asshole dude who was like the worst motherfucker ever in the world. And where they went with him was pretty fucking crazy. There was a, like a whole like lacrosse team or something. And this one girl, it was the relationship. Oh, oh, there was like these two old lesbian ladies. I think they were lesbians. <laughs> there was some there was all these different relationships. And what ended up happening with all of them was pretty fucking cool. I dug this movie a lot. I would definitely watch it again. I definitely recommended it. Or excuse me, I definitely recommend it. The only part about this movie that I didn't like was the very end. Super spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it, close your ears for 20 seconds. At the end, the girls singing loud after they, her and the other woman had made it through everything and had come to the military zone. The little girl was singing loud in the tunnel. And that is what saved them from being shot down by the military uh, soldiers because it, they knew that they were not zombies. That didn't make any sense to me because that little girl singing that loud in that tunnel would have amplified and any zombie within a mile would have heard that shit and came running and they run fast as fuck and they would have been done. And the soldiers would have just shot them and the fucking zombies because they wouldn't have been able to see who what the fuck they were, you know, who was who. So that didn't make any sense. Other than that, it's a good movie. I highly recommend it. I'll give it a B. <laughs> the next movie I want to talk about is uh, Gold and it stars Matthew McNahay, McNahonahay, Matt Crack the Hockney, Matthew McNonohay, McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey, Matt McNaho. <laughs> Sorry, that guy, the dude from all the movies. <laughs> Gold. I'm going to give it a B. It's it's a good movie. I like it. I definitely recommend watching it. It's really I'll give it a B plus. Matthew McNahay went all in in this movie. He put on a bunch of weight. I watched the bonus footage on a DVD. They were talking about how Matthew McNaughey put on all this fucking weight and like put on a fake tooth and just let, like his hair was like balding and he just looked like fucking shit. Like, you know, he's a pretty, pretty boy Hollywood dude. He looked like a fucking sweaty asshole in this movie. So he really went in for it. And I give him credit for that. But I mean, he kills it and everything. He's a good actor. The story is based on a true story based on a geologist who found a bunch of gold in where in indonesia i believe and matthew naknaho was his friend who also was in the gold industry and the two of them made the biggest gold claim in fucking history and all these giant companies wanted in and and it was all this money being tossed around and all this shit and then the, the shit just went crazy i'm not going to spoil this movie you, you should watch it it's very very good what i'll say is it's a very good movie that's what i'll say I gave you the gist of it. It's about gold. It's called gold. I'm going to give it a B plus. <laughs> All the acting is good. The story is great. After you watch the movie, go, there's like a 10 minute or 20 minute thing on YouTube telling the actual true story. They did. They played it pretty close with this. It's got some, some suspense and some mystery and some shit that happens. And you're like, what the fuck? And whole lot of money being thrown around and some betrayals and some fucking lies and some, 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 some investigations and all kind of shit. The story goes fucking it goes way sideways and it's very, 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 very good. It was very emotional. Like it's, you start watching it and you're like, this guy's life sucks. And then his life is a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. Fucking a it's 
awesome. You feel good for him. And then there's something happens. And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> and you're like, oh, your stomach sinks. And then, but then and you're like, fuck, this, this story sucks. It's such a downer. What the fuck? And then, but it keeps going. And it's like, oh, no, but yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. And then it comes back down. And it's like, ah, oh, no, sorry. No, it really does. It's, it's a bummer. It's, and then, no, but then it comes back up. And, it, and so it, it's, it's an emotional roller coaster. You really feel from Naknahe, Matthew Naknaho, um, you really feel for that dude, and it's it's good. It's really good. Watch it. Gold. It's in the red box. Check it out. Highly recommend. A side note on that movie: Bryce Dallas Howard is in it. That woman is super fucking beautiful. Her face is is stunning. Like, what the fuck am I looking at? Like her eyes and like the shape of her nose and her mouth, and she looks like hypnotizing. I was and I like the redhead with the freckles and shit, all that. I, I she is crazy beautiful when she's not fat. I mean, nothing against fat, but I'm just saying, you know, she seems like, I don't know, maybe she had some kids or something. She kind of ballooned up a little while and it made her face kind of stretch, kind of took away from it. But then when she shrunk back down to normal, wow, her face like demands attention. The whole movie, every time she's on screen, I was just, I wasn't paying attention to anything. I was just looking at her face. Just gorgeous. Anyway, next movie. The next movie I'm going to talk about is... Purge election year. I had not watched this movie on purpose because I didn't like the first two movies. Purge was dumb to me. I felt like they just kind of, I felt like I could have wrote a way better story for the purge. I thought it was an awesome idea, but it was poorly executed. The second one, I didn't like any better. Both of them are totally forgettable movies. So I purposely didn't watch election year, which is the third one. Um, but I, I just subscribed to this dude on YouTube called good, bad flicks, where he talks about movies and he was going off about how great the purge election year was and how it was awesome and fucking definitely check it out. So I was like, okay, I'll check it out. I'll take the recommendation. Um, the purge election year is not is is a completely forgettable movie. I can't give it a grade because I didn't finish it. I just I was totally not interested in the movie at all. I try I sat down like two three times trying to watch it. It's boring and uninteresting, just like the other two. I'm not trying to shit on whoever's vision it was. Uh, I just personally did. I, there's nothing there for me. Didn't like it. Didn't like any of them. I would honestly like to take a stab at writing a purge movie. And um, hell, I think they did a better purge <laughs> version of the purge on uh, Rick and Morty. I just that uh, the movies, the the feeling of them seems corny. The the way that they look, just I don't know, it just takes me out of it. I don't like it at all. I don't know. The fourth movie and the final movie that I wish to speak about today is called The Wailing. The Wailing. The Wailing. It's another uh, South Korean flick that I happen to hear about on some fucking. What was it? I think on Good Bad Flicks, that, that dude uh, YouTube shit that I just stumbled upon uh, recently. The Wailing, um, a quick synopsis, is there's a, a village somewhere in South Korea, and the police sergeant of this village is a goofball, kind of a moron, who's just doing dumb shit all the time, and who, who, who really sucks at his job. And then stuff starts happening in his village, and people start dying. His investigation sucks, <laughs> and he's just kind of inept at everything everything but then the stuff starts happening to him and his family and strange people start appearing in his village and this movie goes from a goofball comedy to by the end of it a complete horror flick completely serious fucking horror flick <laughs> So if you think of like Cabin in the Woods, this is nothing like Cabin in the Woods, but in that movie, Cabin in the Woods, the movie kind of changes. It goes from like goofy, silly to like horror, but it's still like kind of a silly horror. The wailing goes from goofy, silly to the exorcist <laughs> fucking level type fucking horror. It is in sane very good movie i'm giving it an a so much to say about this fucking movie the main best part about this movie is that at the end of it you're sitting there asking yourself questions like wait a minute so who was this person it was that person so wait so that whole time he was the and, and then the, wait so she came to, to save the, the and then hit but then that trap was that hit he got caught in the trap but she didn't and there's so much going on it's it's just food for your mind i've been thinking about i watched this movie what on saturday i think and today's tuesday and i'm still thinking about it. i woke up thinking about this 
movie. It is so good. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Once again, it's Korean. It has subtitles. If subtitles are a problem for you, I don't know what else to say. I look, you can look for a version that'll be uh, English dubbed or whatever, I guess, in the future. I'm, I'm telling you, this movie is great. What it's about is that dude, that cop, that South Korean cop in that village, he stumbles into some shit, like some, some murder shit, and then it starts affecting his family. And that's all I can say about it without spoiling the shit out of it. So I'm just going to spoil the shit out of it now. There's a Japanese dude who appears out of nowhere to this village and everybody in the village is talking about it. At the same time as this Japanese dude appears, but he lives like in the woods by himself in like some shack with his dog and people just see him here and there and they just, they kind of whisper about him like, yeah, that Jap came and then all of a sudden some weird shit's happening. At the same time as the Jap shows up, the Japanese dude shows up to the village. Koreans and Japanese people aren't really fond of each other, I guess, because in the movie they straight up do not, they, they, they just keep calling him that fucking dirty Jap and the Jap. I was like, damn. So I guess Koreans and, Jap and Japanese don't get along in real life or otherwise I'm pretty sure they would have been more sensitive about that shit in the movie but they had no problem shitting on <laughs> the Japanese people. Which, I don't know, that's funny. The So the, the the Japanese dude comes, shit starts, bad starts happening. People start being like sacrificially murdered. People, other people start going crazy. Other people start getting rashes and dying, like convulsing until they die. Other people start flipping out and murdering other people and then all of a sudden this dude the, the cop who has no idea what to make of any of it, him or his whole squad are just fucking useless. I mean, they, they, they can't even fight. It's pathetic how terrible they are at being cops. No weapons, not even a billy club or a taser or nothing. They literally run away from shit when it happens. It's funny. It's funny in that regard, but then it gets very serious. Next thing you know, the, the cop's daughter starts acting weird. That's when it gets it starts getting real. And the cop starts getting serious. And then um, that's all I'm going to say about it. it. It's very, very good. Multiple mysterious people show up. You don't know who to trust and who not. You don't know who's doing what who's who's responsible for these murders the the shit with the japanese dude go, gets way crazy um that, that shit gets way bananas <laughs> like all the way through the whole movie you don't know what the fuck's going on with this japanese dude very very good movie the wailing it's on uh netflix right now highly recommend it check it out so in summation on the movies gold definitely watch it i'm giving it a b plus train to busan I'm going to give it a B plus. Definitely watch it. I, the only thing I didn't like about Train to Busan is the ending. Anything I didn't like about Gold? Um, My mom pointed out something about that didn't make sense. But it's a small thing that she did. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. At one point, Manaknahe, Matthew Manaknahe, gets malaria out in, in, the, in the jungles of in, Indonesia digging for this gold and shit. And he's like down and out, like sweating and dying in this like... <laughs> just super terrible fucking situation in the middle of the jungle and he's just laying like that for like weeks or months or something my mom pointed out that he never lost any weight and he still had this big fat gut and he still looked like exactly the same when it was all over and he should have been emaciated and i was like oh yeah you're right if he was down for two months not eating not doing anything because he's dying from malaria and then he finally got over it he would be he would have wasted away like he would have been way skinnier and they just i think forgot about that in the movie that or or maybe we just didn't notice that they did address it i don't know but like i said it, the movie's great definitely worth watching it's worth watching just to see uh <laughs> bryce dallas howard i think she looks the best that she's ever looked in this fucking movie anyway purge election year is a piece of shit uh if you're into the purges according to that dude good bad flicks it's the best of them they're all garbage to me i, I really i'm kind of offended by those movies i just think they they ruin a good idea they're just not good. And I'm sorry to say that. I don't I don't like to shit on anybody's project. I just don't get it. I think they're bad. And the wailing, I'm giving it a solid A. If you go on YouTube and watch like reviews or or after I watched it, I immediately typed the wailing explained on YouTube and boom, all these videos popped up because everybody was talking about it. Like, what the fuck did I just watch? It's that good. Go check it out. It's an A. It's an A movie. Next segment. All right, everybody got it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So segment. Segment. Yeah. Segment. 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 So one. Two, three. Next segment! Today's fun fact is about coconut oil. Were you even aware of the million different uses for coconut oil in your everyday life? Coconut oil helps balance your hormones. It improves your digestion. It reduces cellulite. It reduces wrinkles. It reduces age spots. It balances your blood sugar. It improves your energy. It helps fight Alzheimer's. It helps burn fat. It helps reduce bad and increase good cholesterol and so, so much more. But the most important benefit of coconut oil is that it makes a great sex lubricant too. It has a naturally pleasant scent. 
and it is totally safe and inexpensive, and it feels pretty damn close to a woman's real coochie juices. So if that clam is dry, give coconut oil a try. <laughs> Next segment. Fix it now! Say it louder. Fix it now! <laughs> Fix it now. All right. This one I have touched on in the past and I talked about it heavily in the book, but it's been on my mind a lot more lately than it usually is because there's something weird going on. Like I've been saying, the weather here has been super strange this year. I mean, one day we wear coats because it's in the 30s and then the next day we wear tank tops because it's fucking suddenly gone from 30 to fucking 90 degrees outside. Like right now, it's like 80 something. Last night it was in the 40s. Last week, I think it was like in the 30s. It's just all over the place. Who knows if it's actually going to be summer now or what? It's They're showing it's going to be warm today, hot as fuck tomorrow, like 90, and then it's going to start going back down again. Things are, The world is weird. Nobody's talking about it. Whatever. That's not what I'm getting into here. I'm talking about, on top of the weird weather, the animals have been acting a little bit strange to me, too, I've been noticing. There have been way more animal strikes on the roads around here than is normal for this time of year. We get a lot of animal strikes because there's a lot of woods around, but, I mean, I'm, I'm a driver. I see the, the shit every day. I can tell you right now, I'm seeing way more. I, I usually see these kind of numbers like in the in the fall, like when the deer start fucking and the, the, the bucks are chasing the fucking does around or whatever. And they're just, you know, mindlessly running around across the roads and all that. But right now I'm seeing tons of dead animals and not just deer, possums and, and wildcats and other unidentifiable piles of bloody fur and guts. And, and shit all over the roads every single night hundreds every single night like so many and it's just uh, it's just a little bit out of the ordinary nobody's talking actually a female that i work with she mentioned it the other day too she said i'm seeing all kind of dead deer and shit out here yeah like way more than normal there's two that i can think of right now that stand out of all the piles of blood and guts that i see one of them is literally just a ball of furry guts up against the fucking, on the left side, up against the fucking Jersey barrier in a construction zone going into West Virginia. I have no fucking idea what the fuck kind of animal that used to be, but it looks like a hairy basketball with like intestines and blood squirting out of it. Another one that sticks in my mind, and I see that every night. Nobody's picked it up or cleaned it up or nothing. It's just there. Another one that I saw the other night, which was the first, was just the ass and hind legs and tail of like a baby doe flat on the ground in the on, in the middle of the fucking highway pointed up so that the, the baby deer's tail was little fucking puffy tail was fucking pointed straight up in the air just its ass and hind legs and that tail was there with like blood and and whatever underneath it splattered everywhere i'm like where the fuck is the rest of this animal what ripped it in half like that this shit is not normal i've never seen anything like that crazy that shit was a first for me anyway. Anyway, all of that aside, I want to say a few words on the deer strike issues in general. We need to use either deer repellent or fencing with overpasses for the deer to go up and over stretches of the roads that have the highest deer strike numbers everywhere, but particularly in my state of Pennsylvania. I've heard all kind of arguments of people saying about how we shouldn't mess with the deer's natural moving patterns and all the rest of that stuff. And I, I respect where you're coming from. But at the same time, you're wrong. And here's why. The fact is that when when people decide to develop areas for humans to live, live in and travel through, we are already deciding that those areas are for humans. So we've already we've already decided that we're claiming these areas for ourselves. It doesn't work if you want to just say it's a grand idea. You say, no, you need to let the nature in and blah, 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 whatever. If, we're, if we need a place to live we're the dominant animal. We're going to take this place and make it ours. And I'm not saying that we have to attack all the deer and kill them and murder them like a bear would if defending its own territory that it claimed for its own or any other animal, a bird, you come near a bird's area that it decided that is its area, it will attack the fuck out of you. A cat will spray its piss and attack the fuck out of anything that comes near its area decided that it is theirs. Humans are no different. We're, we're, we're claiming these areas for ourselves as the dominant animal species in the area. 
and the deer don't get to just traipse through any old way that they want. If a bear was living where we decided to live instead of us, the deer would divert somewhere else to get away from the fucking bear because that is natural. So it is also natural for the deer to have to direct somewhere else where we decide to live. Now, it's not cut and dry. Once again, I'm not saying that <laughs> we need to slaughter all the deer and get them the fuck out of here. I'm saying that we need to stop acting like we need to just let them fuck. We have roads with machines that move at high speeds that are heavy and dangerous. You, you want to protect the deer. You're not protecting the deer by letting them just traipse the fuck across the roads that we use. You just have to think about the numbers of deer who get killed on roads by vehicles every year. In my state alone, Pennsylvania, in 2015, State Farm Insurance Company reported 126,275 animal collisions in Pennsylvania alone from 2014 to 2015. Okay. That's 126,275 brutal animal slaughter deaths, probably a whole lot of property damage, possibly even some people died because whatever. How are you protecting their, their natural pattern by just letting, allowing it to be like that? You're not. You're encouraging them to be slaughtered by our vehicles on the road. It's incorrect. It's the wrong way to do it. But I, I stick with the with the thing that we're the dominant animal. If you go, if I, I got cornered by a deer in the woods with her babies, she felt like I was approaching her shit. She stopped and was looking at me like, bitch, what you going to do? And I backed up. That's the law of nature. We decided that this is ours. I don't give a shit if you think that deer are beautiful and you want to see them in your yard and all that if if where you live is a is a problem area where it's it's too many of them are, get, are getting killed by vehicles and and causing destruction of vehicles and causing people to get hurt and die and blah 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 then that's a problem for us we have to look out for number one first and i'm not saying be insensitive to them i'm saying we need to come up with some other ways to do it and i don't have all the answers we have how many millions of fucking people in this country come forward with the answers people i have two suggestions one of them is deer repellent the other one is uh overpasses that go over the the places where they tend to migrate over all the time and get fucking hit. And then on top of that, the way that we clean them up whenever there's all these animal um, spills in the roads, why don't we have a truck already? There should be a truck with a fucking arm that picks up the fucking deer. It can ride around up and down the highways all the time looking for dead animal carcasses. Any skunk, deer, cat, whatever the fuck got hit by a car and is out there being nasty, rotting away, being slippery for somebody on a motorcycle to slide in the blood puddle or whatever, or not see at night and hit and, and jump and shit. Whatever. I've, I've done that. I've hit shit at night I didn't see and it launched my fucking motorcycle up in the air. Just crazy shit. Anyway, we need to have a, a, a truck with a fucking robot arm with a, a team of a couple people that ride up and down the highways all day. They should have chemical fucking suits on. They should have a robotic arm that they can use that'll just fucking, with all kind of lights and cones and shit that they put out, they ride down the fucking highway. They see a fucking dead animal. They fucking stop use the mechanical arm to pick up the fucking deer, pick it up and put it in the fucking top of the truck. Boom. There's a fucking incinerator on there. Instantly done. The thing's gone. They should have a hose with some kind of a disinfectant spray, <laughs> clean up, blow away all the blood and shit. And, uh, or even to have a, have it. So the truck just has a scoop at the front and they can just drop the scoop and pick the thing up and dip back and keep on rolling and spray a little fucking disinfectant, not even have to get out of the truck. Something to make it efficient and to get because there are between Pennsylvania and West Virginia where I drive I mean there's hundreds of fucking dead animals all over the place and I know some people come along and pick them up and take them home and eat them or whatever fuck all that shit we need to have a system in place to, to, to handle this shit and the deer should not just be allowed to fucking wander all over the roads and shit everywhere I'm not talking about everywhere like where I work is it's slow it's a low 25 mile an hour speed limit and there's lots of woods all over the place between the buildings and the deer run around and they're cute whatever that they're not causing any harm there i don't ever see any deer strikes there highways 70 mile an hour 55 mile an hour whatever it is that's where it's dangerous that's where you can Get, really get dangerous, especially for people on motorcycles. If you haven't seen that video on YouTube with the dude who hits a motor uh, deer on his motorcycle, uh, I don't know. You might not want to watch it. He lives. I mean, he's fine, but the, I think his bike gets destroyed and the deer gets pretty fucking hammered. It's pretty fucked up. It's we should be past this already. Fix it now. Next segment. You've got to say it like you mean it. Put some bloody fucking energy into it. Pull it up from deep down in your gut. Unzip your damn pants and let your balls swing low when you say it. Fire it out like lightning. Something I bought recently. 
I told the story already last week about what I did with my phone case. I just want to give a quick review of the two cases that I ended up with. I, I, I explained how I ended up with two cases. I bought one at the AT&T store just because I didn't want to leave uh, the store uh, with the phone unprotected. But I knew that I wanted a case that had a belt clip because I go I go for my phone way too much to have it in my pocket. And besides, this phone is, is it's too big to have in your pocket. Yeah, I don't know what people do who don't have a belt clip. They just hold it all the time or what? Or just leave it sitting on a desk or something all the time because it's the phone is way too big to put in your pocket. I would be afraid that I would bang it up against the counter or something and break it. I having it like right in that front pocket. Definitely not going to have it in the back pocket. Anyway, a hip case has been my case of choice for like my last, for every cell phone I've had, basically. It just works for me. So I bought um, two cases. I bought the one at the at t store. And then I ordered another one immediately on Amazon that had the hip case. I ended up using the two of them together. The the actual case that I bought from AT&T, the Incipio Dream 2 phone case. It was 30 bucks in the store. It is sexy and elegant and perfect. And I love the way it feels and the way that it looks. And it protects just enough. Just enough. It's got everything you need. It's the perfect case, except it doesn't have the belt clip. And it doesn't have a, uh, a kickstand thing, you know, to lean it up if you're watching movies or something on a desk. But the other case that I bought does have have the kickstand thing on the case but i'm not using that so that's out the window but also the clip hip the hip clip belt clip part of the case also acts as a kickstand so that part that i do use as a hybrid type situation this hip clip thing from the what's it called the bikaza b-e-k-a-s-e case it's the bikaza hard shell holster combo matte finish protective slim case with kickstand and locking belt swivel clip it was only 15 bucks on amazon the reason i didn't just go with this case is just because it's just not sexy it's not as as hardcore or durable or sexy or good looking or good feeling as the incipio case but before you judge me on that on why i would even consider getting a lesser case than the $30 one. I mean, it's half the price is because I've had really, really good luck with cheap Amazon cases. The case that I got for my last phone, my S6 Edge Plus, it's called the Unicorn Beetle. And it was like 14 bucks on Amazon. Oh, it's a, it's a unicorn beetle sup case, S U P case. Uh, this case is, is superb. It's, it's not as sexy as the one that I have on this Incipio one that I bought, but the form factor of it is perfect. I, I mean, I've had this thing for like three years and I've had three different phones in it because I had my phone replaced twice because of shit bullshit. But, uh, and I still have the case sitting here. I don't, I turned the phone in on my new one, but this case is in perfect condition and I've dropped it and I've banged it on shit and I've just been abused and it's still sitting here pretty and perfect and it was like 15 bucks so having said that i've had good luck with the cheap amazon cases besides that this because a case had straight five star reviews on everyone who rated it in the store. I don't have anything bad to say about this case except that it was, it's just cheaper than the Incipio case. If I had bought this Because a case at first, I would have just rolled with it and it would have been fine. The Incipio case is way better though. It just feels better. The texture is better. It has better protection. And in the end, I ended up with a perfect combo using the belt clip from this one and the case from that one. And so that's why I did that. But I, I mean, you know, the Because a case is, I don't like that. There's like a honeycomb weed like um pattern on it that just looks ugly to me that I didn't notice on the pictures in the fucking on the Amazon store that's the the turn off for me it looks like a fucking wicker basket but black and I don't like it but I still use the belt clip because you don't see that part when it's hooked on my belt and like I said the clip like locks open so you can use it as a kickstand so there you have it that's something I bought recently two phone cases that I use together as one next segment did anybody ever tell you how much of a piece of shit, scumbag, douchebag, asshole you are? Nah, man. You are an asshole if you are a... Let me start that over. I'm a, this is another quick story that I'm going to tell. Quick, true story. There's. I was looking for a place to rent, a place to live a few years ago. And there was an ad, I believe, on Craigslist for a house for rent. It was like 600 bucks for like a three-bedroom house with a yard. It was a small house, small bedrooms, but it, it had a yard and a driveway and, and I think a garage. And it was on a decent street. And I went out and looked at it and was looking around. and was like, wow, yeah, this is decent. I just, because the address was posted with the picture, it said, yeah, you can go check it out if you want. So I went and checked it out and I was like, this is very, very decent. And I even spoke with the neighbors next door and was like, hey, how's the landlord? They're like, oh, landlord's cool. Or no, I asked them if they knew the owner of that property. And they said, yeah, that person who owns that property owns our house too. Super cool landlord. 
everything's great, no problems. We've been here for a long time and we don't plan on moving anytime soon. I was like, holy shit, excellent. Like I had thought maybe an apartment. Now I'm going to end up with a nice little house with three bedrooms or whatever and a porch and a, like a back patio and shit. I was like, this is excellent. It was like 600 bucks plus utilities or something. It was too good to be true. So I responded to the fucking ad and almost immediately I got a message back from the, the owner and the owner said, yeah, just, um, did you go look at it? And I said, yeah, but you know, I want to take a tour and check out the inside. And the guy says, well, I'm out of town right now. So, but I mean, I, you know, I could forward you pictures of everything inside. I said, oh, well, well, no, I definitely want to check out the inside. And he's like, yeah, hey, I'm in Africa. And I said, oh, okay. And he said, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be around for a while, but if you want the place, I'll send you pictures of the inside and then I'll send you the application. And then uh, somebody will come and drop off the keys to you. I have somebody there or something like that. And I was like, all right, let me think about it. And he's like, oh, well, don't think about it too long. And I said, okay. So I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, the shit seems fishy. But like I said, I saw the neighbors and the neighbors said, yeah, everything was on the up and up. I didn't jump at first. Something told me not to. I went back to the house for a second look. When I did, there was another couple there, a, a man and a woman, and they were also interested in it. And I was like, oh, are you guys looking at this at this place too? And they're like, yeah. I was like, where'd you find it on Craigslist? And they were like, no, no, no. We found it on like uh, apartmentfinder.com or something. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, the price is great, huh? They were like, yeah, uh, 900 plus utilities. That's not bad. And I was like, what, what 900? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, no, it's 600 plus uh, like gas and electric. And they were like, no, it's 900. Um, the owner is on the way right now to come and show us the place. I was like, no, I just talked to the owner and the dude said the, that he's in Africa. And they were like, nah, dude, uh, sounds like that's a scam. Were they trying to get your information? And I was like, yeah, they were talking about this. I had to fill out an application and send it back. They're like, yeah, sorry, man. Yeah, it was too good to be true. This this house for 600 bucks, are you crazy? I was like, yeah, I know. That's what I thought. So I went home disappointed or went back to my mom's house disappointed. and was like, fuck. And I was super furious that it turned out that that shit was a scam. And so I wrote the dude who I had been talking to a fucking flaming hot email telling him that I hope he died and fucking <laughs> in a fire and all kind of shit. I was furious. And that's what today's You're an Asshole segment is about. Scam artists. That motherfucker in that house, or who, excuse me, that motherfucker had taken, he had just basically copied the pictures of the actual ad for that house and the, the address, which was listed there anyway, made his own ad with it on Craigslist. And I'm guessing if I had sent, filled out the application, he would have just had like all my information, my social security and all that shit or whatever. If I'd have went through it, I'd have sent him a check. That is a, a level of a piece of shit asshole that is just fucking despicable to me. If you're a scam artist, it means you're just evil and you need to be put down. You need to be put down if you're a scam artist. I mean, euthanized. <laughs> you need to be dead. Here's why I say that. Like, nobody wants to work. Who wants to work, right? But a lazy person who just doesn't have any initiative in them or any ambition to do anything at all, they can at least be motivated, maybe. Or, or, or someone who's too tired, they can take an energy drink and and, and if there's <laughs> there could be a light at the end of the tunnel, maybe you don't have to work forever. But a scam artist is a person who has energy and is creative and they come up with clever schemes to steal from people who do work for what they have instead of just using that energy that and creativeness to get jobs and to advance themselves into a place that they want they would be if you're willing to put energy and effort into stealing from good people who are actually doing shit they don't want to do just to live and you want to make their life hard just because you don't want to fucking work and you have the ability to work, oh, fucking die. Fuck you. Fucking get off my planet. You're just a maximum garbage human asshole piece of shit that should be kicked off of the planet. You should be flung off the planet with the world's biggest trebuchet straight towards the moon. And we should just be able to watch you fucking splat on the fucking moon on pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I hate people who, who just sit around imagining ways to steal from other people. And you know what? I'm going to go further than that. I'm going to go ahead and pile on people who rob people, people who mug people to steal their stuff, people who do home invasions to steal other people's stuff, people who carjack other people's cars or, or steal shit from other good, hardworking people who work hard for the things that they have. And you're just going to take theirs because you don't have none instead of copying the good person so that and doing what they're doing to get their stuff so that you can have stuff too. You decide to no, fuck that. I'm just going to hurt this person and take theirs. Die, die. If you ever threaten someone else's life for their material possessions, you should be thrown into the mouth of an active volcano or slung behind the next fucking space shuttle on long chains 
so that you burn up in the fucking jet blast of the fucking rocket boosters or flung into outer space at high velocity. There are already a million and 58 ways that life can suck and be hard for us just by being human beings without other people with evil in them hurting other people who are good. If you're an, if you're that kind of asshole, die. There's no room for you here. Next segment. <laughs> So here's an idea. Um, well, first, another quick little story. I was driving to the bank like two days ago and there was a car in front of me rolling down the same. We were rolling down like the main avenue, the main avenue, like downtown of this of the town below where I live. Car in front of me, passenger side window rolled down and something flew out of the car as the car rode up the street. Whatever it was made a big splash in the puddle in front of a telephone pole right next to the the car happened to be passing. And as I got up, I was like, what the fuck was that? And as I got up to it, I saw it. It had been a, a, like a big ass fucking slushy cup, like the big clear plastic cup with like the, the cone lid with the big hole in it and the straw and full of a slushy. And whoever was in that fucking passenger seat of that car rolled down the window and just threw it out. And when it hit, it hit puddle and splashed everywhere and the slushy went everywhere. And then the three pieces, the cup, the lid and the fucking straw are all like separate and they're just floating in this puddle and it looks terrible in front of this fucking shitty, shitty hole in the ground in front of a fucking shitty fucking telephone pole. And it just looked shitty and it was just fucking shitty. And I I started boiling inside myself at the person who had just thrown that shit out the window. I hate you if you litter. Like, (laughs) I hate the fact that you cannot fucking hold on to your fucking garbage until you get to the next place that you're going and then throw it away. I guarantee wherever the fuck you are going in your car, whether it's back to your house or to a gas station or to the mall or anywhere, wherever you're going there, I guarantee there will be public fucking garbage cans sitting out for you to put your garbage in. Not only that, as you're riding down a street, you can just look to the right or to the left and see public fucking garbage cans anywhere and just stop at one of them. If the fucking shit in your car is bothering you that much, you got to get rid of it right now. Pull over to one of them and throw your shit away or just wait until you get home and throw all your fucking garbage away at home. Why the fuck do I have to live in a place that looks like shit because of other people who don't give a fuck about what it looks like where they live? Fucking die. (laughs) All right. Execution's probably too strict of a sentence for people who litter. Okay. I will fucking concede that. So like I said, I have an idea and I mentioned this last time. I'm going to call it the public shaming channel. It's a simple idea. If someone, if you are caught on video or picture or photograph doing any fucking like whack bullshit, like throwing your fucking garbage out the window as you drive down the street and somebody happens to manage to fucking capture it on video or a picture of you doing it and they can they can come and get you for that the sentence non-negotiable flat out 100 percent of the time 12 for 12 you get 12 weeks of 12 hour shifts sifting through public waste at a fucking landfill 12 hours a day for 12 straight weeks no days off and it's videotaped live you sifting through everyone else's garbage to find anything that's recyclable and put it in the bins to be shipped off to be recycled so that our landfills are better okay because we need to do that anyway so you'll be the ones doing it on top of that there will be live video feed so this will be in every state every fucking township every city that has their own fucking landfills. Anyone who's caught littering or doing any other bullshit, like going and taking a shit in a public restroom and then walking out without washing their hands and then fucking touching shit as they go around the store, just wiping their fucking dookie on everything, like the the coffee lids and shit. If you get caught (laughs) doing that shit, 12 weeks of 12 hour shifts, sifting through public waste to find recyclables at a landfill site. 24 hour video feed of this shit broadcast on a public act Access channel for free, like on regular free fucking channels, broadcast television network shit, 24 hours a day. And anytime your ass is on screen, it will be listed. This is Joe Blow. Like, so the video feed will, there will be like a little fucking thing on every person's fucking uniform. It'll be like a little transponder on every, all the fucking uniforms of the people on the sifting through the garbage. And anytime the fucking camera, the video camera is on that particular person, boom, it'll show their face. Boom, it'll show the little fucking clip of what they did, throwing the shit out the window of the car and their license plate number. And that's how we caught them or whatever. And it'll say, this person was a litter bug. They don't give a shit what it looks like where they live so they can come and 
and help clean up, you know, it'll just, and then not only that, but the information, the fact that you will be, the fact that you're going to be on that show will be broadcast through all of your fucking social media. So everyone in your fucking social media friends list, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Google Plus, whatever, will get a message saying, bam, Joe Blow is an asshole. They got caught fucking sneezing into their fucking hand and then touching the fucking coffee lids at the fucking gas station or whatever. Just anything gross that's like low level bullshit that just like, you know, like picking your nose and wiping it on a fucking uh, gas pump handle. Just anything stupid and that that's just whack and just makes everything stupid and, and, and whack and dirty and scummy. They'll all get notifications that you will be on TV at this point because of what you did. So it's the public shaming channel. That's my idea. That's it. Next segment. So now I want to talk about a song. Do you remember a few episodes back when I played that song from a uh, band called Gojira? It was called Malthakala. It was like a heavy metal song. And I was talking about how much I love it. I had also said that th- that band's music was about as hard as I get as far as heavy metal music goes. I listen to all kind of music from fucking Latin music where I can't understand words. Hamilton mu- movie soundtracks to rap to fucking um, R&B to heavy metal to whatever. Limp Biscuit. I only go so far in the hard heavy metal music. This is as far as I like so far. Like there's harder shit out there that I just don't seem to like. Well, the other day I was at the gym and I heard something even harder and I was it popped up on Pandora and I found myself bobbing my head and then I found myself my body just moving to the music as I was standing there like in front of the machine at the gym and I was like holy shit damn this is good mother fuck what is this song and I immediately shazammed it and I've listened to that song 400 times since then and I've seen it there's a video of the the band playing the song uh, here's the fucking song <laughs> So that song is called Gray Matter Mechanics. The band is called, I guess you pronounce it, Allegion, A-L-L-E-G-A-E-O-N. The album is called Proponent for Sentience. I love that fucking song so fucking much. It goes into me and gives me crazy energy. And then as I was explaining before I played the clip, there's a video on YouTube of the band playing their instruments, playing the song like in the live recording. Not, I don't know if it's live or what, but these dudes are incredibly talented. Like I can, I can see a bunch of people saying that it sounds like noise. If you watch this fucking video of this, of this band playing this song, even at the end of it, they were like, that was fucking awesome. These dudes are killing it on all like three guitars, a bass, uh, the drums and the singer. They are crushing for the, and it's an eight minute fucking song, which is why here, I'm going to play another quick clip of the song just because so you can get a taste of another section of it because it changes. <laughs> Thank you. 
so yeah, these dudes, I, I love it. I'm exploring the rest of their fucking shit now. Um, I found a couple other songs that I like. One of them is like um, something uh, into the Matrix brain matrix or something another one's like um the god particle or something a lot of it's super heavy and i kind of back away from it a little bit but they do other shit like if you listen to the beginning of that first clip it's like it starts off with like steel string spanish guitar and then it goes into heavy metal and i love that it just shows how multi-talented they are i respect the fuck out of that and this shit absolutely solidified the fact that I'm taking drum lessons as soon as I can very very soon very very soon as soon as I can figure that shit out because I can't play drums in this apartment <laughs> and I don't own a drum kit and drum lessons are like $30 an hour when I looked it up so it's like stupid expensive and I haven't um I haven't sold 500,000 books yet but once I hit that million book mark I'm pretty sure I'll be able to afford my own house and uh have a room where I can put a drum kit and that is the idea. That's the plan. But anyway, check out Allegian, A-L-L-E, what is it? A-L-L-E-G-A-E-O-N. If that song did anything for you, it's called Gray Matter Mechanics. Uh, I'm going to say go on YouTube and look up the fucking the video of them playing. It's awesome. They're awesome. I was trying to hit those fucking those screaming notes that the fucking singer does. And I my voice simply won't do that. I don't see how he can do that. I don't understand. Like my voice... I, I cannot, I can scream and I can talk very, very loud. I can scream very loud, but I can't hit that ah, like he does. My throat don't work that way. It's crazy. Love the music. Love the song. Next segment. Here's a hygiene tip for you. You stink. Get away from me. Here's a hygiene tip for you. Bust your teeth, buster, and get away from me. You've just got to have better smelling breath, mate. That's all. Then perhaps you can make friends. Today's hygiene tip is... Check yourself in the mirror anytime there's an opportunity to do so. This doesn't have anything to do with being vain. I'm not talking about combing your hair constantly or fucking put, you know, greasing your eyebrows or putting on chapstick. I'm talking about anytime you walk past a mirror and you have a chance, just check your face. Check your whole situation real quick. The whole thing should take 30 seconds or less. Do a quick look for fucking eye boogers or stuff in your teeth. Look at your teeth real quick. See if there's some fucking, you know, some salad green stuck in the fucking gap in your teeth. Check for rogue pimples that may have started <laughs> forming while you were talking to someone. And the whole time while you're talking to them, you kept wondering why their eyes kept drifting over to the left side of your forehead. It's because they were watching a fucking whitehead form on your face and didn't want to say anything. Pimples pop up at the weirdest times. All of a sudden you'll have one. Just go in and, and check every time you get a chance. I'm not saying run to the bathroom all the time. I'm just saying if you're near a bathroom, if you're in one, don't forget to give yourself a quick look over. Check to make sure your fly is zipped. Check to make sure you don't have any fucking booger clingers caught in your nose hairs. Check to make sure that you don't have any fucking crustiness in the side of your mouth or spaghetti sauce on your fucking tie. The selfie camera on your phone works for this also in a pinch, but, uh, you know, it's kind of weird. I wouldn't be sitting at your cubicle doing it too often. Somebody might see you and think that you're just a vain piece of shit. But you know what? I would take the people thinking I'm a vain piece of shit over me having a conversation with someone and having <laughs> having a piece of steak stuck in my teeth that I don't know. Doing this could mean the difference between a conversation that you wanted to go your way, going your way. Like uh, you asking that new girl at the gym for her phone number. She'll probably diss you if you have fucking dried up white shit in the corner of your mouth or food in your beard or fucking sauce on your shirt and a dried snot ball in the corner of your eye. Give it the quick check whenever you have the chance. Don't forget to do it. That's your hygiene tip for the day. Next segment. No champion beauty for this episode. Um, I decided to, to give it a break for this one just because I wanted to talk about something else related to that subject, though. Instead of a champion beauty and a champion beauty is just that to me, a champion beauty, like top level, beautiful woman for my taste who's famous. That's all it is. Just acknowledging famous, beautiful women that I see on TV or whatever movies or whatever. I have one that I had chose for to talk about today, but I'm going to do that next episode. Today, what I want to talk about real quickly is the list of women who are all outstandingly beautiful women who can't call them champion beauties because of <laughs> because of the one thing that kills it for me with each and every one of them. It's not the 
same for each and every one of them, but it's in the same category of thing, which is that they either have some sort of plastic surgery work that I know of, or they wear weave in their hair regularly. Like I said, they're all still outstandingly beautiful women who, if they wanted me, you know, of course I would absolutely be into falling in love with any one of them, but I can't say that they're a champion beauty because I'm so deeply against the 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 vanity upgrades like I'm, I'm super against it so what i mean is i just can't look at any of them without focusing on what's fake about them and really quickly that's exactly what my problem is with chicks wearing weave all the time when i see weave on a woman's head it does not trick me into thinking that they have really pretty straight long beautiful flowing luxurious hair most of the time sometimes i've been fooled like i said i was fooled by beyonce at first i thought she was just a mixed chick with good hair not good hair but you know straight hair um most of the time i i automatically see the weave and focus on it and i don't mean to but i'm black and there's black females in my family and i've been surrounded by black females my whole life and i dated black females and i know what black female hair looks like i know what it's supposed to look like i know what my hair used to be like when i had hair i know my mom mom's hair used to be like all the women in my family. I know what black hair looks like 99% of the time. When I see a female, a black female with weave in their hair, to me, it's like they're wearing a costume and I'm just like, why, why are you wearing that costume? Like it doesn't look natural at all to me. I can't take it serious. I don't look at that and say, wow, your hair is beautiful. I look at that. Like, why are you, why do you have that on your head? I know what your hair is supposed to look like. Just do that. Listen, I had the worst grade of hair that any human has ever had in the history of hair. They called my nickname. Part of my nickname as a kid was nappy. Okay. They called me nappy. So-and-so I ain't going to say the rest of it because reasons, but my hair was fucking horrible. But you know what? I let it grow long. I I, I put in the work. I comb. I used to have, I was tender headed on top of it. I combed the fuck out of it. I tried all kinds of different moisturizers. I did whatever it took. And I had an Afro that was so banging and beautiful that this white dude approached me and I might have talked about this in a previous episode. I definitely told this whole story in the book. It is a great story. Check it out. It starts off with me talking about how I was standing downtown with my mom was up when I was a teenager. And this strange white dude was staring at my hair because I had a fucking afro, a big, fat, awesome looking afro, even with my nappy ass hair. It looked awesome. The white dude would not stop staring at it. It ended up uh, being because he was a prop designer for a, a um, movie studio and he was working on a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie in my city right at that time. He paid me to cut my hair and to take it because he said my hair was awesome. They used it as a prop in a movie. That's proof right there that you can do stuff with your own hair no matter how fucked up and nappy it is and make it look decent. You're not fooling anyone. No one thinks that your hair looks like that. It just We just see you with this thing on your head and now I can't take you serious because you're just pretending all the time. Ladies, stop pretending all the time. Be the best that you can be for what you really are and I promise it'll be good enough for the world. You don't have to look like her or like her or like her. Look like you. You're beautiful, okay? So that being said, here's my list of just a few honorable mentions who honestly would be champion beauties if it wasn't for what just distracts the fuck out of me whenever I look at them. Number one is Beyonce. I had said in a previous episode that the first time I saw Beyonce, I said, that is the fucking most beautiful woman in the world, period. Then I found out that she was wearing weave and I was like, oh, fuck, well, yeah. I don't know. I just was like, ah, fuck it. (laughs) I mean, it just turns me off. It just turns me off. Then I've heard that she pays like $10,000 for her weave. I was like, yeah, okay. That's like mental illness to me. So yeah, Beyonce, you're beautiful. You know, she don't give a fuck what I think about her anyway. But yeah, she's a beautiful ass woman. But I, you know, the weave ruins it for me. Another one, Sanaa Lathan. Saw her in Blade and was like, holy fuck, I need to marry her tomorrow. One of my all time favorite good looking women ever, Sanaa Lathan. Damn. And you know the thing about her is, and Beyonce, I've seen pictures of both of them without their fucking weave in, and they both have half decent heads of hair, but they still put in the weave all the time. Ugh. And then they do weird shit. Y- y'all, y'all do weird shit when you, sl- you have to like prop your head up when you sleep like a certain way because you don't want to fuck, and then you can't get sweaty because the weave will fuck, and then the shit's like sewn into your head. It's just gross. Number three, Megan Good. Who the fuck is, who the fuck looks better than Megan Good? Like, if you look at her head to toe, she's She's like a fucking doll. She's like, like she would be like a the, the black woman sex doll, like the perfect one. You'd buy that, and, uh, you'd take that home, and ooh, the people wouldn't see you for a week. 
you be in there fucking Megan Good is like a just a, just perfect. But you know what? Megan Good got a boob job. I'm out. <laughs> that I, I'm out on that note right there. Don't get me wrong. They're not like big crazy fakers or nothing. But that makes me just move on. Once again, if I met her and she wanted to date me for whatever reason, I'm sure she wouldn't have now after hearing me talk shit. I'm not talking shit. Megan Good is is female perfection except for the fact that she got a boob job. I can't stand that. Iggy Azalea. Have you ever seen pictures of Iggy Azalea? She looks like the perfect statuesque white fashion model look. Turns out her whole face has been reconstructed surgery and she got a boob job. Eh, I'm out. <laughs> Megan Fox. I saw a whole fucking thing on the internet and I don't know if this is true or not, but they showed pictures of her before and after. That face that you see on her now that was the face that you saw in the Transformers is not the same face that she had before she got her whole face cut up and, and chopped up and screwed. And I don't know. I've seen a lot of fake shit also, but this was a pretty convincing article and I never seen her like denying whether or not she got it or not. It sucks. Megan Fox was when she came out in the, in the Transformers. I was I was I was blown away. She, she was sexy as fuck, and I still think she's sexy as fuck. But I'm pretty sure some her face has been uh, artificially created by some doctor somewhere. That sucks. The last one I'm going to mention is Paris Hilton. You might disagree with this, but uh, I know at least one other guy, my best friend, me and him are in agreement that, that back in the day when Paris Hilton was like her heyday, when she had that porn out and all that shit, Paris Hilton was exceedingly beautiful. Even whenever she was in that porn, which I watched a whole lot, all of them, I watched like three or four of them. She had like perfect tits, perfect little tits. They were perfect. They were like the kind, like the teardrop tit. They were, she was, she was so beautiful. You look at her now, she got a big crazy boob job. It sucks. That's all I got to say about that. All beautiful. But, you know, I don't know. I'm out on the fucking the fake shit. Stop trying to pretend there are reasons to get fucking plastic surgery. And there are reasons if you're in a movie and, and you need to have a fucking hair piece on for this part. Uh, fine. Whatever. If you want, if you're going out to a dinner and you want to look your best and you want to put on some makeup and all this, fine. But if you're putting on fucking makeup to go to the gym, <laughs> if you're wearing weave all the time, like that's a part of your fucking everyday routine because you, eh, I'm sorry. I'm out on that. To be continued. Thanks for coming as always, folks. That's the show for today. Please subscribe. Please give me that five-star rating on iTunes. Please tell your friends about the show. Please be good. Please take care of yourself. And please help other people always as much as you can. I'll be right back with you up in your life with another episode before you even know it. Peace.